Hello, hello, everybody. Are you grateful to be in the house of the Lord today? Come on. Come on, get on your feet today. You know, before we start, I just wanted to remind us that the reason why we're here, we've all come here for more of the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. And I don't know about you, but if there's ever a time that I need Jesus the most, it's probably right now. And I need to be filled and encouraged and restored and renewed and confronted with the truth and comforted by his spirit. And I believe all of us are here for one thing alone, and that's for the man, Jesus Christ. So can we just, can we just lean in together? Where, wherever you are in the room, whether you're in the back somewhere, in the up here top of the room, what's up? Thanks for being here. <laughs> um, that's right, baby. He went back there because he wants to sing louder. Isn't that right? Amen, amen. Can we just lift our hands today? And let's set the tone for what this week's gonna look like. This week is not just tradition. This week is about remembrance. This week is about remembering of what our God did for us. The story is not just a story, but it really happened and it's real. And there's a man named Jesus who died for you and me. And today we are united. And today we get to have relationship with the presence of God because he did that. So Lord Jesus, today we remember, we remember how precious your blood was that was shed on Calvary. How humble and how lowly you are to submit yourself to death for us and how much you love us. So today we, we come before you and we humble ourselves to you and we say, have your way. Be Lord here in this room tonight. Be Lord throughout this whole week. Have your way. Be enthroned on the praises of your people. And today we've come to bring you an offering and a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips. We love you. We're going to sing with all we got. In Jesus' name. And everybody said together. Amen. You ready to sing? Come on, church.
Make some noise tonight for the Lord. Come on. Give him praise. Hey. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you. We honor you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Holy, 
so good to have you here tonight. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you being here. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we began this a few years ago when we started uh, taking Holy Week and really uh, commemorating it, and not only commemorating it, but setting aside this time, amen? amen, where we, you know, things we have to do after work are important. We've got homework, we've got kids, we've got food, we've got all that stuff. But to take no more than an hour tonight and an hour tomorrow night to just come in and, and, and go over what went on that week and learn from it and, and then have some time where, where we let God speak to us. Can I hear a good amen? Where we, we, let, we let the Lord speak to us. And, and I like it. I, I heard a guy say a few years ago, he said, you know, there's times where, where you just need to lean in more. It's not that you weren't leaning in, but you just need to lean in a little bit more. And that's how I see these, this week, that we're leaning in more. Amen? Amen. And uh, we're going to lean in, and we're going to have some time. So, uh, yeah, praise the Lord. You can be seated for just a second, all right? I want to go over a little bit of what, of what all this. You know, we're not only here tonight to pray and to worship God, and, of course, He deserves it all. You know, I was thinking as we were standing there that we have a great advantage over the people that were there when Holy Week was happening, they didn't know it was Holy Week. They had no idea. They had no idea what was going on. Jesus' own disciples had no idea what was going on. Uh, no one understood it. The only one that really knew it was Jesus himself. He understood each day and each event and everything that was happening and where it was going to end. And it didn't end at the cross. How many of you knew it ended on Resurrection Day? All right, so one part in, another part began, but I'm getting way ahead of myself, so let's just stick with the narrative. All right, I'm going to read to you what happened here uh, on this first day after he'd had his triumphal entry on Palm Sunday. And uh, he had his triumphal entry. We all know what went on there, right? They were welcomed him and honored him and sung Hosanna and uh, carried the palm branches, which represented victory in the nation of Israel. So they, you know, were celebrating. I think some of them, Maybe we're celebrating what they thought, but in truth, we understand what was really going to go on. And the next day, we have this incident that went on, and I want to show you this, all right? And so in Matthew chapter 21, verses, verse 12, we're going to read 12 and 13. It said, Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. Now, for years, there has been a lot of misunderstanding about this, and, and I'll be frank with you, over the years, uh, you know, we used to have a bookstore out front, we used to sell Christian books and Bibles and CDs, how many remember CDs, and before that, get ready, cassettes, <laughs> I still love cassettes, but anyway, they're long gone, and uh, so we used to do that, and on a regular basis, I used to get, well, back in the day, it was letters. Then it became faxes. And then we evolved into emails. And people would accuse me of having a den of thieves because we had a bookstore. And that Jesus said, that you shouldn't be selling things and all that stuff. Now, let me explain to you what really happened here, okay? And it's amazing what can happen. Let's just take a moment, but I want you to understand this so there's no confusion, right? It's amazing what can happen if you just study a little bit. It doesn't take long, just a little bit of study. And what you discover is what was going on in the temple. Now, it wasn't in the inner part. It was on the outer courts, and when you came to the temple to offer sacrifice, you had to pay your sacrifice. You had to buy with temple money. That was in the law. You had to buy with temple money. You couldn't buy with money that had Caesar's head on it or somebody else's world leader. It had to, you had to use temple money. Does that make sense? And so it, they were commanded to have money changers before you went in and bought the lamb or the turtle doves or whatever it is you were going to buy to offer and sacrifice as prescribed by the Mosaic law. And so they would exchange their money. So it was not wrong that these men were there. What was wrong was what they were doing. 
what they were doing is they were not giving a fair exchange rate to the people of Israel when they brought their Roman money in or Syrian money in or whatever kind of money they had and they brought their money in, they were, they were ripping them off. Does that make sense to you? And they were taking advantage of them because they had nowhere else to go. They couldn't exchange their money anywhere else. And so Jesus saw that. The other thing that went on is they had to buy turtle doves and lambs and pigeons and the prescribed things. If you read the law, it's very detailed what kind of sacrifices you have to make at certain feasts or for certain sins or for certain prayer requests that you were making. It was very prescribed. I just finished reading the law last week. I read the whole thing, right? And it's very prescribed and very things. So what these men were doing, selling these things were not wrong. What Jesus got mad about was the exorbitant prices they were selling them to the people for. So they were taking advantage of them. They were ripping them off. It would be no different than if we had a t-shirt out there and the only place you could buy this t-shirt, you had to have this t-shirt, and we were the only people that sold the t-shirt, and we bought the t-shirt for $10 and we sold it to you for $200. Somebody should come in and overturn our tables. Is that making sense to you now? And that's what was going on. All right? And that's why he called them thieves. Read the next verse. And he said to them, it is written, this is the most powerful statement of the whole day. My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of of thieves. They were stealing from the people. The people were coming to pray. The people were coming to offer their sacrifice. And these guys out front were ripping them off. Does that make sense to you now? But the important thing, let's not get hung up on them. Who cares? We don't live in that. We don't do that anymore. But thank God, the house of God is still, shout with me now, a place, a house of prayer. Amen? Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go look at another one. All right. This is, this is very important. Go with me to Psalm 24. All right. You guys got all three verses ready for me? No? Do they have all three verses? Because I just have one. Okay, let's read this one and see what it says. Who shall ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Well, what it goes on to say is those with a pure heart and clean hands. All right? Those with a pure heart and clean hands. I think it's always important that we're constantly looking at ourselves and this week is a good week and tonight is the perfect night to take a few moments and look into our hearts and look at our lives. And if there are things that, that, we, that we know we, we need to stop or things that we need to ask God for forgiveness for, let's not carry them with us into the week. Can I hear a good amen? amen. I said, can I hear a good amen? amen? Let's not carry them with us. Let's, let's receive God's cleansing and God's forgiveness and God's love for us. All right, here we go. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul into vanity nor sworn deceitfully. So the important thing here is that we make sure that our hearts are clean. Amen? That we be quick to repent, that we don't carry sin with us. Now look, we all sin. There's no perfect person in this room. You know, it's like the Lord said to me decades ago. I was really struggling with my own life, and, and uh, I was really beating myself up over some things. And, and the Lord, I felt like the Lord spoke to me in my heart, and he said, Son, always remember this, and I've always remembered it. There's two lines for the human race. I went, oh, okay. There's the perfect line, and there's the imperfect line. There's one man in the perfect line. Everybody else is in the other line. Get ready. No, if you're clapping for that, wait for this. He said, everyone else is in the other line. 
But because of the man that's in the first line, all of you get to change lines. Now, come on now. Come on. I mean, that, that had to come from heaven. Don't you agree? Come on. How many of you are so glad you get to change lines? Amen. So we get to stand behind Jesus. So when God the Father looks out, he doesn't see me, he doesn't see you first. He sees Jesus first and he sees us through him. I said he sees us through him. Come on, he sees us through him. It doesn't matter what you've done, no matter when you did it, no matter how many times you've done it. Every time Jesus look, every time the Father looks at you, he looks through Jesus towards you. And you know, you may be a real stinker, but your stink is not greater than his sacrifice. What you did in your life is not greater than what he did. Amen? One more thought and then we'll pray. Are you glad you came tonight? One more thought and then we'll pray. Right? I heard this years ago of a good friend of mine. Maybe you've heard his name is Joseph Prince. And Joseph Prince made this statement. I've never forgotten it. He said, our sin is like as if we owed somebody $10,000 and couldn't pay it. Like we were in debt and we were behind and we couldn't pay it. $10,000 and we couldn't pay it. And then somebody came along and found out about your $10,000 debt that you could not pay. And somebody came along and put into your account, not $10,000, but a million dollars. Put a million dollars in your account would you be afraid of that $10,000 debt? <laughs> would you lay in bed at night worried about that $10,000 debt, right? You would pay that off that fast. Amen. Well, my family, when God's son died and the blood of the son of God was paid, God put a million dollars into your account for your $10,000 debt. And there's nothing you can do that is going to exceed the amount that he has deposited on your behalf. Does that make sense to you? All right. That, I said, does that make sense? I like that illustration. It makes sense to me. Open makes sense to you. Stand your feet with me, please. Psalm 24, verse 5 says, He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation then that seek him, that seek his face, your face, O Jacob. Lift your hand towards heaven. I believe I can safely say tonight that every one of you that are here on a Monday night, that you'll come tonight to seek his face. That you're, no, you're not willing for life that was. You want life that can be. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. And if you've never lifted your hands towards heaven, can I just encourage you tonight? Would you try it? While everybody's watching, can I tell you something? Ain't nobody looking at you. Nobody. Nobody's even looking at me. Just lift your hands as a sign of worship and honor and surrender and respect. When your hands are up, you're completely vulnerable. Lord, before we go any further this week, we take a moment and we go inward. We ask you to turn your light upon our souls, upon our hearts, upon what our hands are doing, what our lives, our hands represent what our lives are about what we're engaged in in life. And Lord, we ask you tonight to turn your light upon us. We want clean hands and pure hearts. Lord, if there's attitudes in us that need to change, Show us tonight so we can change them. 
if there's believing in us that we believe about ourselves or we believe about life or we believe about others that's wrong show us we don't want to go another minute with believing in us that is contrary to you and your will and your purpose show us Lord so we can change it. If there's behavior in us that we've been justifying, that we've been blaming others for, you made me act this way. God, please shine your light on our that we may repent tonight. Receive your forgiveness and your cleansing that we may walk out of here tonight with pure hearts, pure intention. Lord, we recognize tonight we only get one life. And we think it's so long, but in fact, it's but a vapor. Help us. We cry out to you tonight. Help us. Help us. In Jesus' name. I'm going to be quiet. We're just going to be quiet in the room. Please, nobody shouting out or yelling or anything. A lot of times, people in church have a hard time when it gets quiet. Somebody's got to get loud. So let's just be quiet for a moment. I want you to just open your heart up. Turn your eyes on him. Oh, I love that song. Do you know that song? Turn your eyes on Jesus. Look full on his wonderful face. Can we do that in a minute? Maybe it would be good for you tonight to just say out loud, just under the, underneath your breath there, Jesus is Lord of my life. Jesus. Jesus is Lord of my life. Jesus. Listen to this. I say this every day. Jesus is Lord in my life. Jesus is Lord through my life. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus. Maybe it'd be good to repeat this part of the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done in my life. Huh? will be done in my life as it is done in heaven. Thy will.
This is an old song. beautiful before we go any further now I want to take a moment now if you have needs in your life if you need healing in your body in just a few days you know Jesus is going to go to the cross right and the Bible says that on that cross he bore your sicknesses your diseases your illnesses he carried your pains and your sufferings. If he did it, I don't think I have to do it. If he bore it, I don't have to bear it. If he carried it, why should I carry it? Why should you carry it? If he already carried it. Amen? You know, somebody carried that pulpit in here tonight. I don't see any need for me to go over there, take it out and bring it back in. Somebody already carried it. If Jesus already carried it, you don't have to carry it. So we want to pray for you. But the same afternoon that he paid the price for health and cure, Jeremiah 33, he also was made to be poor so you could be well supplied. Yes, God does care about your financial life. He does. Do you care about your children's financial life? I bet you do. How much more does your heavenly Father care for yours? Jesus said. So if you need prayer tonight, I can't list every area of need. But if you need, if you have a need in your life tonight, I want you to lift your hand right now. Let's gather around these people. Let's gather around them, put our hands on them. Don't, let, don't leave one person there by themselves. This young man right here needs somebody. Put, his, put your hand on him. This lady. There you go. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for each other tonight. James said that if we would pray for each other, that the effectual fervent prayer of righteous men and women would avail much, would bring great power, dynamic, and its working into play. So, Lord, I believe tonight that it is not a coincidence or anything short of divine providence that these people are here in this service tonight. And we believe tonight, Lord, that health and cure is coming their way. Come on. We believe tonight that you are bringing them. Jeremiah said, I will bring you health and cure and cure you and will reveal unto you the abundance of peace and truth. 
So we receive that tonight. Jesus said in Mark 4, 11, that when we pray to believe that we receive it and we shall have it, well, we are believing that we are receiving it and we are having it. Because of you, because of your name, because of your covenant, because of your work at Calvary, because of your resurrection, we believe tonight for health and cure. We also believe tonight for financial blessing in the lives of your children. Lord, I know we're living in very difficult times. We keep being told that it's not as bad as we think. Yeah, it is. And we pray for each other tonight. But thank God we have a covenant. And if God be for us, it doesn't matter who's against us. If God be for us, who can be against us? And I believe tonight, Lord, that you're going to move supernaturally to provide for your children. The doors are going to open. Opportunities are going to rise. Wisdom is going to come into their life. You're going to show them how to do things. You're going to give them favor when they go to buy. You're going to multiply. In Deuteronomy 8, you said you will multiply everything we have. You will multiply it. Cause it to last longer. Cause it to go further, Father. Do those kind of miracles for your children. You did them for Rochelle and I back in the day, and I believe for you to do them for your children here tonight. You'll multiply the food in their refrigerator. Say amen to that. You'll multiply the gas in their tank. I know when I pray this that people think I'm crazy. I don't care what they think. Who cares? What matters is you are the God of multiplication. You did it for Israel. You've done it for others. You'll do it again tonight because we ask you to. You love to do it. You love to answer prayer. You love to confound the wise with foolish things. And we receive that into our lives tonight. The power of multiplication because our God is the multiplier. And we thank you for it tonight in Jesus' name. Now, can we take a moment here and rejoice and give God the glory a little bit? Amen. Have you got a good worship song for us real quick? Will you do one for us? Speak to me. Speak to me. Come on. Your voice is all I want to hear. bowed never eye closed just a moment I'm not going to assume tonight that I understand and know where everybody's at in here I do know this that everything Jesus went through in Holy Week and everything he went through on Good Friday and everything he went through when he was buried for three days and three nights 
and he was raised again from the dead, he did it so all of us could become children of God. So all of us could come into a personal relationship with God and know him as our heavenly father. Not just know about him, but be in the family. And to have Jesus come and live on the inside of us as our Lord and our Savior and teach us how to live and bring to us forgiveness for every transgression, past, present, and future. And to teach us the power of the Word of God in our life and how we can take that Word and apply it and begin to have and enjoy the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. So I want to ask you this personal question tonight. Somebody asked me this question 50 years ago, and I'm so glad they did. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? The day a young man asked me that question, I really had no idea what he was talking about. But I knew that the answer was no. And he said to me, do you know why I'm asking that question? I said, no. He said, because all of us need a Savior. And we all need a Savior because we've all sinned. We've all sinned. Nobody had to teach us to do it. We know how to do it because it's in our nature. And sin by itself would separate us from God. But God took it upon himself to provide the Lamb of God, Jesus, who would take that sin away, who would remove that as a barrier between you and God the Father. This is beautiful. That by removing that sin and by accepting Jesus as our Savior and confessing him as Lord of our life, we could be saved. We would not die in our sins, but instead we would have everlasting or eternal life. We would live with God when our life is over for eternity. But I make that decision about my eternity, not when I get to eternity, but here and now. So I ask you tonight, can you remember a time in your life where you stopped in the course of your life and you asked Jesus to come into your life and you received him as your Lord and your Savior. Can you remember that? If you've done it, you'd remember it. I promise you, you would, right? If you've never done that, this is what I think. I think you're not here tonight by chance or by by coincidence. You're here tonight because God, if I can be so bold as to say, built this huge building and put a big bunch of chairs in here so on Holy Week of Easter season of 2024, you would come in here and there'd be a chair for you and you would hear me talk to you and you would open your heart and God's will would be done in your life and you'd become a child of God. It's incredible when you think about it. Pastor, I wouldn't even come in tonight. Yeah, but here you are. I wasn't supposed to be on the campus of UTEP that day when that young man walked up to me and talked to me, but there I was. So in a moment, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to lead the whole church in a prayer. We call it the prayer of salvation. It's full of scripture. I'll ask you to repeat it after us along with everybody else. Nobody will be singled out. And I give you my word as you pray this prayer tonight, but more important, I give you God's word. As we pray this prayer tonight, as you call upon the Lord, he's going to step into your life. He's going to forgive you. He's going to save you. He's going to make you a child of God. He's going to come and live inside of you. And he's going to be with you from now until the end of your life on earth. And he's going to take you to heaven and be with you there forever. So if you'd say to me tonight, Charles, thank you for explaining it to me. When you pray, I'm going to pray with you tonight. Tonight is my night. Whether you're on the floor, in the risers, or online, tonight is my night to become a child of God. I'm going to accept Jesus into my life. I'm going to become a child of God tonight. I see the need. I need a Savior. I need need my sins washed away so I can be in right standing with God. If that's you tonight, before we pray, would you do me a favor? Just put your hand up real quick. 
I love to see your hands because it encourages me. Let me see your hand tonight. Pastor, I'm going to pray with you to make Jesus the Lord of my life. Our ushers are going to come and give you a small card. There's hands over here. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Pastor, I'm going to pray with you tonight. Over here. Thank you. God bless you. Others up in the risers. I'm going to pray with you tonight, Pastor. Wonderful. If it's one, if it's 30, we are happy. The Bible says all the angels rejoice when one person comes to the Lord. All, all. Isn't that amazing? One. All right? So all of you raise your hands. We're going to pray now. Let's all pray together. Let's say it with enthusiasm, right? With meaning. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, and I receive you tonight into my life. I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. And you did it all for me. For this moment, so I could become a child of God. I didn't deserve it, but I got saved through grace. Your undeserved favor. I receive you tonight. Come live in me. Be Lord of my life. Teach me how to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we rejoice with all these people tonight? Amen. Isn't that spectacular? Beautiful. All right. Now, one last thing, and then I'll let you go. We're going to get out right on time at 729. Do not leave early. Because the fleas of a thousand camels will be in your bed tonight. You don't want that to happen. All right. It's still 729. I realize that many of you may have some prayer requests that, that are different, or maybe you'd like to talk to somebody a little bit and have them pray with you about something in specific. So when service is over, our prayer team is going to be down front. They'll stay here. They'll talk with you. They'll pray with you. They'll lead you in prayer. Take advantage of this if you need it. If not, will you come back tomorrow night? I said, will you come back tomorrow night? Amen. All right. God bless you. I love you. It's 730. You can leave.